I'm Nick from Mountain Trail RV. This is Heidi. That is a Land Cruiser 300 GR Sport. That is a Mountain Trail Alex V 6.2 off-road caravan. And this is the Gibb River Road. In this episode, we take you on an amazing adventure through the Kimberleys as we tackle the Gibb River Road in our stock standard Land Cruiser 300 series, towing a Mountain Trail Alex V 6.2 off-road caravan. Follow us as we drive the iconic 4x4 tracks, explore amazing gorges and waterfalls, get on horseback to see some remote and difficult to access areas, spot some amazing wildlife, and most importantly, have a huge amount of fun. We are in Darwin. It's been a long episode from Cairns to Cape York and since then we've driven down to Cairns, gone through the Savannah Way and then we shot down to Alice Springs for the Fink Desert Race and then we went from Alice Springs up to Darwin, then we flew home and then we've come back here and restocking our caravan and now we're ready to go on our next adventure. I'm just filling up the water tanks and we have just ticked over three quarters so the Red Vision app is awesome. You can actually see everything without having to look at the main unit. So part of our restocking is we're going and we're re-sorting out all of this, but check this out. This is a window that got us all the way to Cape York when our original one blew out. So we've been into windscreen place, we've put a brand new window in, so we're ready for the next adventure. It's important to start every trip fresh, so the Land Cruiser is getting a good clean before we hit the road. Don't forget the corner, up the top. We're on the road for 10 days, so we're checking the, all the expiry dates. So we've got five days here, so that's pretty good. We are on the road, we've just left Darwin. Yeah. We went in there, we've sorted everything out, we've filled up the water tanks, we went shopping, we've stocked enough food for 10 days on the road while we travel through the Kimberleys. Yeah, exactly. So we're super pumped, full of fuel, let's get on the road and get to the Gibb River Road. Did fly home for five days from Darwin to check on the factory. Yeah. We left the Land Cruiser at Twyda, it had 10,000 kilometre service. We left the van in storage, but we did notice back there when driving our normal car, which is a five-year-old Range Rover, that it felt dated compared to this in regard to the technology. Absolutely, and back then, five years ago, the Range Rover was the latest technology, so it's completely outdated compared to this. Might have to sell it. We might. Anyway, the Land Cruiser is going really well, so let's keep going to our destination. Ooh, we'll be there in 13 minutes. That's, That's exciting. exciting. Very exciting. Nick is all about campfires. So the first thing that we do when we stop at camp is we hunt for firewood. Tonight we're staying at Sullivan Campground, about an hour's drive out of Catherine. So we're cooking veggies on the barbecue tonight and meat rest oils on the stove. So let's get into it. It's important for us to eat healthy on the road. So I always make sure there is a good balance of quality meat and veggies in our diet. What is important when cooking on the go is getting things that are fresh, healthy, and quick to cook. What I love about camp cooking is how I can make tasty and nutritious meals with ease. With dinner ready and the fire crackling in the background, we're ready to settle in for the night. Day two starts with more kilometers to conquer. Today we are headed for the WA border where this trip will start in earnest. We're still in the Northern Territory. We're heading west on the Victoria Highway. We've just come through Timber Creek and we're looking at the Victoria River and I've just seen out my window a crocodile on the side of the river. So we're gonna put the drone up in the air and see if we can get really close to it. I can't find it.
The scenery out the window is quite spectacular and we're definitely thinking about coming back and exploring more of the Northern Territory. At the quarantine station, we are greeted by friendly crew. So, you've got fruit and vegetables to clear? Nothing. No, nothing. Oh, you don't have anything. I've got, no. okay, I've got awesome. everything empty. Um, so, no plants, soil, firewood, no. nope. crustaceans, no. prawns, yabbies, anything no. like that. No. Awesome. Just double check this list. You're not allowed to take any fruit or veggies into WA due to its strict biosecurity laws. We were prepared for this and made sure we cleaned out our fridges to make the quarantine process as seamless as possible. Um, and we'll have to confiscate any beer and wine as well. So. Hang on. Yes. <laughs> she said she'd confiscate and take all of our beer and wine. You've got to hide something, don't you? <laughs> Follow this road down. Yes. You'll get to Ivanhoe Crossing. Go past Ivanhoe Crossing. Yes. Go past Black Rock. Mm -hmm. When you go past it, you'll probably see a bunch of tracks along the way. But when it has like a national park sign to turn left. How deep is it? How deep is it? Um, yours is a lot higher than mine, so you should be alright. We'll be fine. Um, We've done it's heaps all, of water crossings already. It's all hard bottom, so you won't get bogged or anything yeah. except for one crossing, but it's all nice and fresh because it's only the start of tourist season. Probably like here on yours. So on my Prado but it sits lower, it was just hitting the bonnet, it wasn't coming up or anything. So with yours, you'll have room to clear. <laughs> okay, excellent, we'll give it a go. At the end, we even got some cool local knowledge and advice of a few places to check out. So we've just come through the Western Australian checkpoint. And the lady there said there's an amazing spot to go to that you must check out. So Ivanhoe River, she said uh, definitely get the drone up because uh, we'll probably see a couple of salties. Salties? Yeah. She called so, them salties. Salt water crocodiles. Salt water crocodiles. So we'll get the drone up there as well and see if we can get some. On the road, Ivanhoe Crossing, Heidi is driving, and I am operating the drone. Woo! Good under body wash. Good under body wash, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do I left a little bit? Good work. We had an amazing drive today, right through Northern Territory and into Western Australia and across the border. But before we got to the border, the rock formations out there are absolutely beautiful. The scenery is absolutely spectacular to look at. We are at Buttons Crossing and it was beautiful coming in here because we've got an opportunity to go through the Ivanhoe Crossing. Amazing, iconic for everyone up here in the Kimberleys. And we've seen that Ivanhoe Crossing and many pictures of it and videos of it and we just couldn't believe how amazing it is to drive through there with all the water running through it. So we're super excited. We're about to light a fire and settle in. It is the next day. Last night we stayed at Buttons Crossing because we were recommended by the quarantine officer at the WANT border to go and check out Ivanhoe Crossing. Yeah, which was amazing yesterday. So glad we did that. It was a spectacular scenery. So what we're gonna do now is we're back on the road. We had a beautiful sleep last night. I had about 10 hours, I think. Yeah, it was really good. We had a huge long day yesterday and we worked out why it was so long. It was because of the time. Yeah. We actually gained an hour and a half, so at 9 o'clock at night we were all exhausted, but it really felt like 10.30. Yeah. So great night's sleep, we're back on the road, let's get across Ivanhoe Crossing and see how it looks this morning. Yeah, let's do it. Wow, that is absolutely sensational. It's incredible scenery. I have never seen anything like this and I did not even know that Australia had a place like this. Yeah. The, the, the hills, the mountains, it's absolutely stunning up here in the Kimberleys. We've just entered the Kimberleys and we're blown away by how beautiful the landscape is. Yeah, so let's see uh, what happens in the next 600k, I'm excited. Yeah, we're on the way to Alquestro station right now. Yep. 
and it's absolutely stunning guys. If you haven't been to the Kimberley, so we've only set into it by about 15 minutes, it is beautiful. Yeah, definitely on the bucket list. Self-serve BP, pretty easy to use. Receipt. You can even get an email. Self-service fuel, how cool is that? It's awesome, in Kananara. Let's go. We are at Emma Gorge Resort, not far off the start of the Gid River Road, and it's apparently it's a beautiful waterfall up there. It's a bit of a hike, how long is it? Well, they reckon it's about an hour hike in, so let's an, see. An hour hike in, we've got our hiking shoes on, we we've got our boardies on, we've got our backpack with our supplies. Let's go! Woo! So, this is part of the El Cuesto Wilderness Park, so a million acres of wilderness. Part of the station, it's, uh, this is part of it. A million acres? Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. It's so scenic here, guys. It's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? It is. It's incredible. <laughs> it's winter and it's 30 degrees up here. If you are from the south and you want to get away, straight away, this is a magnificent and beautiful picturesque place. Oh. And we haven't even got in there yet. What are you doing? I'm here. <laughs> I'm doing crabs. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm engaging my glutes so oh I can actually God. use my glutes. Wow, this is absolutely amazing. It actually feels like, I wasn't expecting this, all these rocks. It's like a canyon gorge we're walking through. Very rocky. So, but exciting and something totally different that I've not really seen before. And look at the views, spectacular. It is quite incredible. I just cannot comprehend. I've seen the photos, but photos do no justice. You have to be here in real world. 100%, absolutely. It's beautiful, stunning. Look at that. That's where we're heading. We're gonna have a swim when we get there. Oh, can't we're wait. We're about halfway. Oh, uh, did, did you see the crocodile? Uh, no, we missed the crocodile. Oh. I tried to see They it. said the first pool. Yeah, I had a look, but yeah. I, there's decent sized fish in there, but I couldn't see the crocodile. Yeah, okay. So we're about three quarters of the way through. It's pretty cool. I wouldn't say it's super challenging, but it's uh, definitely rocky. Um, they'd probably say it like a medium kind of uh, walk. But look at this, this is quite incredible. Like, I just cannot get over. The cliff faces. I it's know. So, cool. so we're right in the middle of the gorge. Yeah, we're right in the middle of the gorge. There's water coming down. There's meant to be, supposedly, a croc at the bottom pool. So let's hope we can actually see the croc rather than uh, talk about it. I feel like John Rambo in First Blood. <laughs> Remember that? Yes, I remember that. When he was in the rocks like this in the canyon, running away from the colonel or the whoever he was. <sighs> I thought I was fit. You are fit. I still fit. think I am fit, but uh, it's good. You are fit, it's just uh, challenging, you know? Where is it? It's in here in like the kind of... It's not in the water, yeah? Yeah, it's in the water. Yeah, it is. You, you can see the two back legs and the tail quite good. Come on. Oh, 
Okay. How are you feeling? <laughs> a little tired, but good. Invigorated. We've just arrived at the falls. I haven't seen them yet, but I can hear people splashing around. Look at this. This is incredible. I can't even, I can't even describe it. It's epic. So let's go check it out. I am desperate for water. Oh, wow. What a feeling. It feels bizarre, doesn't it? It is unreal. Guys, we've arrived. And what a feeling. Like, I've never seen anything quite like it. You should check this place out. We're just surrounded by this gorge of rock all the way. Incredible. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> this is Scandinavia. Where are we? Scandinavia. <laughs> It's incredible. I would 100% come back here again. Amazing. It is just the Kimberleys. So you need to come and check out Emma Gorge. This is the first day in the Kimberleys and what a day we've had. We hit the Gibb River Road this morning, came in not far, did Emma Gorge, so spectacular. Amazing, I've never seen anything quite like it. Totally blew us away how spectacular this walk is and it's actually a hike. You must do it if you come here. What we're going to do now is go to El Cuestro, yep. check in, stay the night and get set because tomorrow we do have a long drive to do on the Gibb River Road. But the journey even getting to here from Darwin to the Gibb River Road was also quite epic in its own way as well. We love seeing our Mount Troll customers out on the road, so when we do, we are always taking the opportunity to go and introduce ourselves, get some feedback, and give some advice where needed. I was just setting up the uh, electricity and the power, and I looked over the side there, and I'm pretty sure I saw an EDX hard floor, a mountain trail. Should we go and have a look? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. It's a 2019 V2 EDX hard floor. Hello. We were just admiring your camper. Is that, is that a mountain trail? Oh my God. <laughs> Your mountain trail guys. Nick. <laughs> Hi Nick, how are you? Good lives, yes? Yeah. Hi. Hi. How many nights are you here? We've got five. Five, okay, mm -hmm. excellent. Manning Gorge is wonderful, so you go to Mount Barnett, Barnett Roadhouse yep. and then mm -hmm. you go into Manning Gorge yep. because you've got the, the waterhole right next to your campground. And actually that's where we saw quite a lot of um, mountain trails for the oh, first really? time. Oh. We saw an EDX first version and we saw two caravans. Right. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Guess who's here? Mountain trail owners. Nick and Heidi. How are you? How are you? Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, you too. How, you? Yeah. How are you? Good, mate. Good. 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 You've been on the road for five months? Five months, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so good and I tell you what, we've been through some really strong winds. Yeah. And this has coped. We did Thunder Cliffs on the Nullarbor. Oh my God, we thought we were going to be blown away. Not more than that. Yeah, I'll fix that for you right now. Because I'm sure it did when we first yep. got it. Yep. Yeah, it needs, it just needed a good uh, running of the bearings. And by the look of your motor vehicle over there, you haven't given it a wash for a while. You've been through <laughs> some red dust. <laughs> well, it was uh, Cape Levesque and the Pilbara dust. Have you changed your yeah. uh, positive pressure air filter? Um, we we cleaned it regularly. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, give it a shake. Give yeah. it a shake yeah, out. Because we, uh, we when we did the cape, um, we did a thousand k's of red, dirt, yeah, full yeah. on red dirt, yeah. and um, we noticed that it was you needed to change it or at least blow it out properly. Mike, well, it was really good to see you. I'm glad you're enjoying the EDX, and hope you have safe travels. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. So the restaurant's fully booked, but tonight we can go to the cantina. They've got chico rolls, hot dogs, potato cakes, deep fried dim sim.
really So we are about to do some horse riding at Old Quest Road. So I'm super excited because it's been 15 years since I've been on a horse. I can't wait to be uh, on a horse. So our guys are pretty basic. So left hand to left hip to go left. Mm -hmm. Right hand to right hip to go right. Mm -hmm. Both hands into your belly button to stop. Yep. Once they've stopped there, just relax that pressure off their mouth. Yep. It's, uh, it's like takes me right back. What a different experience. I love that we're going to locations other people can't get to. And we have had a pretty knowledgeable guide, Sarah, who's teaching us a couple of things in between all the fun. But you can actually break some off and you can eat the petals. It kind of tastes a bit like sour grass. Oh, thank you. No worries. You want some too? <laughs> Oh wow, it's like a gooseberry. Sour, but crisp. Tastes good, like a berry. We are on our Questro station right now, and we're horse riding through the station. So it's amazing to be able to see the landscape and uh, check it all out on horseback. Very exciting. So as we're on this ride, the scenery just keeps changing every corner we go. It's, um, you've got open space with uh, you know, your trees and your big red uh, cliffs, and then you come into like more of a dense area. It's beautiful. And over lots and lots of river crossings. A really interesting fact about the boas is they'll drop all their leaves to preserve their water source. Okay. But just below the surface of their trunk, um, they've got like a clear film and they can actually photosynthesize through their trunk. It's one of the only trees in the world that can do that. Right. So they don't need their leaves to produce their food source. And the reason the Kimberley is so different to any other part of Australia is back when all the tectonic plates were moving, the part that Africa on and Australia collided and a bit broke off and that's what joined Australia, the rest of Africa, when it's in separate ways. That's the Kimberley region that merged with Australia and that's why everything's so different from the wildlife to the plant life to your red rock. How was the horse riding? It was really good. You've never really horse ridden before, have you? Yeah, I have. When? So when I was a young girl, I yeah. did horse riding lessons for oh, right. about three years cool. in Ireland. Yeah. yeah? Did you like it? I loved it. Would you do it again? Yes. Excellent. Yeah, it was just, I went back straight into muscle memory. I just love the horses. The horses are really good. It's like this very slow, mm -hmm experience where you're not having to walk or think about where you're going. You're just on this horseback. Oh, Questro. It's like cowboy yeah, country here. It is. I love it. See, Did, you've even got the RMs on. What about your hat? Did you wear I couldn't wear it because I had to wear a helmet. Oh, and they made you wear helmets? Yeah, of course. Okay. Safety first. Just a short drive from Elquestro is the entrance of Zebedee Springs, natural hot springs set at the foot of massive red cliff formations. The springs are open to public until lunchtime, so make sure you get in early. The walk from the car park is easy, quite scenic and lush. We're at Zebedee Hot Springs, 38 degrees Celsius in here, it's just like a bath. It's beautiful, soothing, relaxing, but look at the environment. be very very careful with your tyres because there's a lot of shaling, sharp stones and rocks. So we've let our tyres down, we're on the road and where are we going to end up today? We are heading to Drysdale Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Yep, so let's get on the road. It's going to be a long drive. This is so exciting. This is so exciting up here. I'm loving it. Yeah, it's amazing.
This is the Gibb River Road. Corrugations after corrugations. Heaps of them. <laughs> yep. And I'm finding that you've got to get the perfect amount of speed. We've got a good tyre pressure. Since we've let the tyres down, it's definitely a lot smoother, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. We've done a tyre. Look. Oh. The issue I think that's happening is when you let the tyre down and you're doing higher speeds like we've been doing, the tyre goes from round to flat in the bottom, so the metal belts are going round, so they're moving, which is causing friction, and the friction's causing heat, and the heat causes a blowout. So we're going to put some air in it, see if it's still got a, uh, see if it'll still hold air. Dust suppression works well though, look at this. Not a speck of dust in here. And you said I was being paranoid when I said I felt something wrong in the car. <laughs> More. It's going down, so what we're going to do is we're going to get down to the bottom of the hill in a safe spot, get it all level, and change the wheel and tyre. So we're getting the manual out. I am not surprised. Because we're not sure on the 300 where everything's kept. Yeah. So I think what we need to do is get everything out of the back, then lift the floor up, and I think it's under the floor. See that cup there? So spare wheel under here. Look at this. This, this is our air filter. So the pollen filter is, the pollen filter is a filter that filters the fresh air into the cabin. This is it from Cape York. We kept it, just in case. Just in case this one gets clogged up on the Gibb River Road. So for those that are asking, we did try towing mirrors at the start of this trip, but when we put these on, the vibrations, you can't even see through them, so they're gone. Now we're going to get the wheel off, switch them over, quickly get it back on, so we can keep rolling. So because the, the ground is really unstable and sandy, I've just jacked it up. We want to really quickly switch it over, so if it falls off the jack, we want to get that wheel on as fast as we can. When we get to the next station and in service, I'm going to call Drysdale and see if we have, if we can get another spare tyre. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, we're this, only... We're 150 k's into the Gibb River Road. Yep. And this has already happened to us. Yep. And they, it's notorious for doing tyres, this road. That's what we were warned about the whole time. So, we definitely have to get another spare, that's for sure. And if I was building a vehicle for this, I would have two spares. At least we can eat lunch at the same time here. This is the Gibb River Road experience. <laughs> Sitting on the side of the road, eating our lunch. <laughs> on a blown tyre. Things could be worse. Could be raining.
We'll keep it. So back on the road, we've replaced the wheel, put the other one back underneath, but I am a little nervous. We're only about 150 k's in, and we have no spare for this vehicle now. The spare's done. So we've got to be very careful, because if we do another one, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. Oh, the corrugations are absolutely brutal. We've lost an hour and a half changing the wheel. Most of it was unpacking the back of the Land Cruiser. But these corrugations, we've lost this time. We need to make it up somehow because it's getting dark. Yeah. Let's get moving. It's just a spare. Yeah. Yeah? But if it wrecks your gearbox, then we put it on. What's that? If it wrecks your gearbox, then uh, we put it on. It won't wreck your gearbox. It's all, it's all good. <laughs> Um, what we got. Do you want to fit up now? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Drive around the workshops over there. Yes. You want to drive around. Be careful of the tree that you parked in front. Yes. So you've got a white stick and the tree's on an angle, so okay. just be careful of that. Thank you. And I'll meet you over the workshop. Thank you. We are at Allenbrake Station and what a day we've had today. Yeah, I know. Incredible. Oh, the tyre. We didn't get far. We did about 200 k's on the Gibb River Road. The tyre really put us off though. But we've pulled into Allenbrake Station and we've got a replacement tyre, a 285-6018, which is a little bit oversized, but it's the same rolling diameter. So it won't be an issue. So we're back with a spare, which I'm really grateful and happy about. Yeah, me too. I was surprised here they had tyres. They have so many tyres here. So it's very, very common with all the shale and rock to do what we did today. So tomorrow morning, we've got a big drive. A lot of driving. Let's relax tonight, have a nice meal, sit by the campfire and get ready for an early start. Honey, we have cooked on this kitchen every every day. Yeah, we have. And we haven't even used inside at all. No. And the main kitchen's actually inside. Yeah, it is. But this just works so well. I know it's not under the awning, but do you know what? I wouldn't actually want it under the awning. You know, last night I saw when we were doing our, um, our meat, right? We were doing it quite dark. And all of the... Um, what's yeah. it called? Like um, yeah, everything was going straight up. All the smoke and, yeah. and food was going straight up yeah. here and not under the awning. Correct. I liked it a lot better. And do you know what? If it's raining, that's the only fear, I suppose. If it's raining, you just go inside because the kitchen's inside. Yeah, exactly. I really like it. It works well. This is called our 1200 kitchen. It's a stainless steel pull-out. 1200, pretty basic name. We do swing around ones as well, ones that slide out and swing around over here. But I actually prefer this because if it swings around, you're back under the awning and you're too close to the door. Yeah, I agree. So even in our 6.7 model, which is, this is a 6.2, so it's a bigger van, it's 22 feet. It's got the door at the back, but I still prefer this kitchen right here. I agree. It's been perfect. Yeah. The van's coping well. And those corrugations, they were absolutely brutal yesterday. They were. And yeah. nothing's moved in there, nothing's cracked. You know, we really are in our own league when it comes to that. And that's because our background, if you look behind us as a company, we're actually an engineering company. We used to design camera trailers, all metal. So in-house, we do laser cutting, CNC pressing. And what we did is we bought all of the DNA of that laser cutting and metal and mm -hmm. put it in a van so we have no joinery. Yeah. And that's our point of difference. That's why we are different to most caravan manufacturers. So this morning we are having a big breakfast. I'm going to do mushrooms in the pan and we've got eggs and bacon because we've got a big day ahead of driving and uh, we need to fuel up. So let's just see what does happen on the road. Yeah. Yeah. And you know one good thing is, as we're on the road, every station that's along the way has tyre repair areas or uh, new tyres, which is fantastic. It is, it's good. Tyre repairs all along. We were just saying last night that if you have, you can order our van with two tyres on the back if you want to, plus one underneath, that'd be three, plus one on the car, four, that'd be four spares. I think that'd be ideal for the Gibb River Road. You know when we were driving along yesterday and we had the tyre? Mm. Remember I said to you something doesn't feel quite right? Yeah, I know. Like we were driving along on a punctured tyre with no air in it for probably 10 k's and did not even know. I know. The cruiser, like, it just kept going. It performed really well. It was just a really weird feeling I got when I went around a corner. I'm like, oh, that doesn't feel quite right. And then we pulled over and boom, completely flat. I was thinking this morning yeah. that, you know the way that we blew our tyre out about 2.30 in the afternoon? Yes. And we hardly saw a car on the road? Yes. Which means that everyone gets up super early and gets to their location, I reckon, on the Gib, probably before lunchtime to do gorges and whatever else, see the scenery. So my recommendation is, do not travel late 
because if you actually need someone to give you a hand and to give you a repair, you're not going to have anyone after 4 p.m. Oh, uh, yeah, there was hardly anyone, was there, really? There was three cars that went past us. Everyone moves in the mornings? Everyone. We're out here cooking breakfast now at 7.30 in the morning and half the campsite's gone. They've left, they've moved on. So they're early to bed and early risers. And there's a <laughs> lot of campers out here, we've noticed. Heaps of campers. Not many caravans, but a lot of campers. It's not a very big... <laughs> breakfast. Breakfast? <laughs> no, no. It's a little breakfast. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we are forty eight kilometres west of where we stayed last night. The road's getting a lot smoother. Heidi, what are you doing with the map? I'm trying to work out where we're going to stay tonight. Because we, we've changed our plans slightly. So we're going to stay at Mount Barnett Roadhouse. Yeah, which is about um, 130 kilometres from here now. Yeah. We have just arrived at Mount Barnett Roadhouse and there's about 12 people lined up waiting for diesel. So uh, in the meantime, we're going to have some lunch and wait in the queue. We're just about to check into Manning Gorge and they said you cannot collect firewood in there. So we're out on the side of the road, we're going to find some dead branches and things and cut them up with a chainsaw. But after that, we're going for a walk into the Manning Gorge. Yeah, it should be amazing. I can't wait to see what it looks like. Spectacular. 3K walk in apparently and then back again. So let's get this wood cut up and let's get in there. You load me up. That one can be down there. <laughs> Where do you want to sit? What about down here? Is it not, not enough sun? No. Why don't we sit on the rocks? Life is awesome in the Manning River. Kimberleys. Right now, it looks like it would be a Saturday or a Sunday. It's actually a Monday afternoon. And look how relaxed everyone is. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> well, Nick has discovered that the Anderson plug has not been charging today at yeah, all. Yeah, it hasn't been charged. It's only been charging on solar all day. Yeah, so we think that might be... I've just looked under here in a massive rock. Our electrical components right here. And obviously this has come out, which we can put back in, but it's all still connected. But that was really bent. I just straightened it. Oh, this road is quite brutal on the equipment. It's all good under there. That might have been that big loud bang we heard, yeah? Mm, yeah. Like a rock just went bang. Cool. Okay. So, 
coming through here, and then we'll go up full driving up right. into there. And then from there, we'll then head to Broome. Excellent. That's cool. What's up here? That is a spot that we've been told we need to go to. Okay. Sounds like a plan. That's good. Yesterday we came into Mount Barnett Roadhouse and we are now staying at the Manning Gorge campgrounds. So they recommended that you have to go to the gorge at the latest time is 2 p.m. We got in at three. The walk up there is three k's and then three k's back and you want to enjoy the gorge while you're up there. You need to get in early if you want to do it that day or the next day like what we're doing. Yesterday afternoon, instead of going to the gorge, we decided to relax at the river, have a picnic, and just enjoy the scenery. It's an incredible looking space. That river looks like an oasis in the middle of the Kimberleys. I never knew it existed. So let's cook some breakfast and get up to the gorge. We're staying at the Manning Gorge campground and we're going to the gorge right now, but you have to cross the Manning River. You do. And there's no bridge, so you've either got to put your belongings in a green boat and pull yourself across with a cable or... You have to swim across and put your belongings in a blue bucket and push it across as you swim. So we're going to swim across and put our belongings in a blue bucket. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> I can't believe you have to swim across the river. <laughs> Yeah. And take a bucket or a container yeah. to get to the goal. <laughs> it's an experience. It is. Let's check this out. There's one white arrow right here in the rocks pointing straight up there. If that arrow wasn't there, you would not know where to go. Like, check this out. That's the walking track. And look up here. You would not even know where to go, honestly. Look. You would not want to be unfit coming and doing the Kimberleys. There are so many amazing gorges. You need to have fitness behind you. What an amazing day heading to Manning Gorge and Manning Falls. What a great walk too. It's good, get the heart rate up. It's very good. Morning walks. So today we've got three gorges to go to. We do. We've got this one. Yep. What are the other ones? Galvin's Gorge and Adcock Gorge. Yeah, all three gorges in one day. Yeah, can't wait. It's gorge day. It is a gorge day. Oh, I don't know how far in we are. We've been walking for probably half an hour. Yeah? Yep. It's hiking, I'll call it a hike again. It's uh. Well, so far it's nowhere near as difficult or rocky as Emma Gorge. Emma Gorge was definitely like an eye-opening surprise when they said it was a walk in there and it was just, you know, you're stepping up some places, you got to climb up onto a one meter boulder where yeah. this is uh, a lot smoother and easier. If you have a look around here, look, it's now the landscape's just completely changed. It's gone to this, have a look at this. Hey guys, how you doing? How you going?
Check this out, we're almost there. Look at this. We can actually see a little bit of water, but look how steep it is down here. This is part of the track. Yeah. Similar to Emma Gorge in a way. Yeah, it is. Definitely. But Emma Gorge was definitely steep pretty much all the way. Amazing, it's absolutely stunning out here. This is Manning Gorge and Manning Falls. It's absolutely spectacular. It is good for the soul. It feels oh. beautiful here. Yeah, amazing walk to get here. Well worth the effort. Let's go for a swim. Well, that was an experience. Hiking out there, three k's out, and that gorge was absolutely sensational to oh, swim in. It was incredible. It was crisp and refreshing and beautiful, and there was kids everywhere having heaps of fun. Felt very earthy out there. But where are we off to right now, Heidi? So we're off to two more gorges, Galvin's Gorge and Adcock Gorge. Two more gorges, we're ready to go. Let's hit the road. This is it, Heidi. Oh, a bit disappointing. It's a nice little pond, but I don't think it's a gorge. Did we miss something? Maybe. Uh, no, I don't think so. Wow, this is amazing. Stunning. And the walk in here is only 1k for the main road. Let's go for a swim. Yeah, let's do it. About 20 k's from our destination. We're getting good at this. We're getting very, very experienced. You need wood to go in there because if you go into these campsites, they've all been raided of wood. So we're going to start this chainsaw. We've been doing this every night. We've had campfires. So good. For all those people that are wondering, it's an 80 cc with a 20 inch bar. So short bar on it. Really easy to handle and powerful through this heavy wood.
Guys, check this out. This is where we're staying for the night. Look at this view. It's incredible. So let's light a fire, get some snacks, have some drinks and settle in and appreciate the views and the privacy too. Look at this. Oh my God, this is like true wilderness in Outback Australia. Love it. I'm making a lamb roast tonight. Very, very simple. I didn't have any garlic left over, so I'm doing salt and pepper and rosemary and a bit of oil, so here we go. We are going to the Bell Gorge. So it's 29 k's off the Gib River Road and we're heading west towards Derby direction. So it's pretty exciting. Everyone's talked about it in the last couple of days. So let's let's see what it looks like. Yeah, and the Land Cruiser, I must admit, this road has been quite tough on our equipment. The Cruiser, you know, it's done 11,000 k's now. It's been to Cape York. The motor in this is absolutely superb. It's a 10 speed automatic gearbox. It's a 3.3 liter V6. It is just ripping along, so 700 newton meters of torque has certainly not let us down. But we have been tough on our gear. We've shredded a tire, the whole back of it is covered in stone chips. The stones are deflecting Ooh. off. <laughs> We're just going to pull up here. The stones are deflecting off the back of the rock tamers and flicking up and hitting the back of the vehicle. Yep. So we're just waiting for a vehicle to do a water crossing right here. There's a lot of water crossings. The car did fill up with a lot of red dust because we blew the back window on the Cape York trip. and our composite plastic window we put in did leak dust um, so it's been tough but you know what I really like it I really do like this vehicle and it's performing really well it is we're putting through water crossings we're hitting heaps of corrugations everything's shaking like you would not believe so you do have to be well equipped when you come here and make sure you're prepared for the Gib River Road Pulled up, we've done another tire. Look at the look at that. That's a stone chip, rebounding stone chip. Look at it in the rim. Second tire on this trip. I was thinking as we're coming in here how rocky and stony it is and shaly again. And I thought to myself, we could do a tire here, and we did. Unbelievable. So now the, the situation we've got is we've got a, a little bit of a mismatched tyre situation going on. So the tyre we got as a backup is a 2856018 BFG All-Terrain and this is a 2656518. The overall rolling diameter is the same on the other tyre but it's a different tread pattern. So it is a little bit mixed and matched. It won't do any damage because it's the same rolling diameter but we are going to have mixed tyres on after this. At least we're a little bit more organised this time. We don't need to unpack the whole back we can access our jack from here, and we left this toolkit out just in case this happened again. Forward thinking, and it has. 
So let's get this wheel changed. See that there? That's from a rock we can show you onto it. See it? I think the tire will be okay. I think it'll be repairable. It's not in the wall anyway. Slightly wider tire. Done, 20 minutes, because we're organized. We can get to our jack, don't need to unload the back. We kept the tools here, just in case this happened again. But I'm thinking, the only thing I would comment about is I think these tires are too small for this terrain. So we can't seem to let them down enough, and that's the issue. So I really think Land Cruiser 300, if you're doing the Kimberleys and the Gibb River Roads, like we've done two tires now. Uh, you need to let them down. Even on our van, we've let them down on our van, and we have not had one issue with the van at all. This rock is just sitting on the drawbar, like that. So they're, they're flicking everywhere. We're walking into Bell Gorge. It's a one and a half kilometer walk, and mm -hmm. they're saying it will take an hour because it's a class five. Is a class five a difficult walk, is it? It is, it's one of the hardest walks. So they're saying it's steep, it's uh, rocky, you gotta climb everything. So let's go check it out and see how steep it actually is. Let's go. So we are in the King Leopold Ranges and we've just done the Bell Gorge Trail to this gorge area here which is absolutely stunning. And now we're going to head up to the Bell Falls Trail which is another 2k as they say return. Might take an hour or so but it's up this steep area and then we'll be able to see the falls. Wow, this is the top of the falls. It's incredible. I want to walk up there and check it out from here. Jeez. Do you know who I feel like? Who? Jeff Goldblum. Who's that? Who, you don't know who Jeff Goldblum is? No. This is like Jurassic Park. He was in Jurassic Park. This feels like a scene out of Jurassic Park without the animals. Can you believe this? That's the track. Look at it. Rock climbing, all right? What's it like, Heidi? It's pretty steep, it's pretty rocky. What's it like compared to the other gorges? This is so much more difficult than any of the other gorges. It's difficult because there's so many undulating rocks and it's really steep up there. You have to like hold on and have balance. So, yeah, it's worth it though.
Bell Gorge is our favourite gorge of the trip and we think far by the most picturesque. You could spend the whole day there taking the sunshine, swimming around the waterfall and hiking through the amazing rock formations. For us, unfortunately, we have to move on and head to the next destination. We had a great day today, we went to Bell's Gorge. Yes. And what an unbelievable gorge, out of all the gorges, I think that's probably my favorite one. I agree. And then we had lunch, we got the tire all changed, and we did about 200 kilometer drive, and right now we are at Winjana Gorge National Park. We're gonna stay here for the night, get settled in, we're gonna cook on the open fire tonight, which will be really cool. And then tomorrow, we're gonna to go and check out the gorge. So we're walking from Majana Gorge. Apparently there's crocodiles in there, so let's check them out. It's 360 million years old, and they're saying that there's an ancient reef in here, so let's go check it out. The walk through Winjana Gorge was fairly relaxing and easy compared to all the other gorge walks we have done. If you're a bird lover, consider walking early in the morning. But if you like to see the crocodiles, leave it until later in the day. They love to come out and bathe in the sun. We found some crocs on the way back from our walk when the sun was starting to hit the sandy banks of the river. These are freshwater crocodiles and not as dangerous to humans as salties. They are not aggressive and don't have large jaws like saltwater crocs, meaning they can hurt you, but they won't kill you. Still, I would keep my distance. My God, Nick, this is incredible. I'm loving 
all of this amazing scenery. I want to come back. The landscape around here is astonishing. It's hard to believe all of this was once underwater. As you walk closer to the cliffs, you can see the remnants of the old reef. So I'm checking out to see if there's any fossils, and I just found one in this ancient reef. So this reef is about 360 million years old, so I can't even comprehend that. It's amazing. After the gorge, we have one more big ticket item, Tunnel Creek Caves. We're 60 kilometers off the Gib River Road going to Tunnel Creek. They said don't take vans in there, the road's pretty rough, and they were right about that. It's definitely corrugated, rough, and lots of stones. So we're a little bit concerned about our tyres, but we've just got out and checked, and so far the tyres are all good. Because if we get one more punch up, we've got a punch repair kit to repair the one we blew yesterday. So Tunnel Creek, let's go, let's check it out. We just rolled up the Tunnel Caves car park and there's a few vans and bits and pieces here but check this out next to us. This is how brutal this road is. This guy has pretty much lost his whole wheel arch. Look at that, snapped. I think he just put it there for the look. But you've got to have strong equipment out here. It is brutal on your gear, it really is. The sun is out, I've got sunglasses and a head torch. What am I doing with a head torch? We are about to go to Tunnel Creek and it is meant to be pitch dark. I'm gonna be wading through water, so I've got my hiking boots on, so they're gonna be drenched. And uh, let's see how it all pans out. I think it's exciting. We're going to Tunnel Creek. I'm looking got, forward to it. We're going to some caves, we've got our head torches on. We're totally organized. Yeah, let's do it, I can't wait. Another little walk. Another little walk. We are, Kimberleys. we are getting towards the end of our trip here. We are. Yes, not long to go. Tonight should be good. We actually ran into some people that owned an Alex V 6.2 last night. And uh, we're going to catch up with them tonight and have a meal, sit around a fire. There'll be two 6.2s. They've done the Gibb River Road as well. Yeah, very exciting. Wow, check this out. It's incredible. Where going. There's going to be a lot of surprises, isn't there? There is in the Kimberleys. So. This walk to be going. <laughs> wow. Yep. This is it. This is the cave right here. Check this out. We're going in. We're going to climb in. Under here. Oh, we're really climbing, people. Wow. So it's been flooded several times. Yeah, absolutely. Imagine this in wet season. Is there crocodiles in here? Uh, yeah, freshies. Yeah?
So I think we're about halfway through the tunnels and we've seen daylight. This is beautiful. What's that? Yet. What's that little light in the water over there? See that? Mm-hmm. It's like an animal or something. That might be an eye of a crocodile. Really? Yep. It could be, you know. They're pink. That is a crocodile. Right there. Ah, yep. Yep. That is a crocodile. Ah. After seeing that crocodile, how do we feel about walking through here right now? Good, let's just go. Seven hundred and fifty meters long. Yeah. Yeah. And only one crocodile that we know about. So what happened to you when you saw the crocodile? You're all wet right up to your waist. Yeah. Well, actually, I had to wade through seven hundred and fifty meters. We have just come through the Tunnel Creek Caves and what an experience, you must absolutely do it. It's 750 meters long, really dark, a lot of rocks and climbing and water as well. The water at some points is up to about waist deep. So make sure you wear a head torch, wear some boardies and definitely wear some shoes. We've got wet hiking shoes on right now. It's an experience you must do. We've just left Winjara Tunnel Caves and we've come across a rollover on the side of the road. The truck has rolled over. Let's check it out. You know, the roads up here are so tough that I can see how that could easily happen. That's a triple road train and the second trailer has gone over. So we finished for the day at Winjana Gorge and Tunnel Creek, which was absolutely amazing. We've done another 65 kilometers of driving. We've pulled up at the Leonard River on the Gibb River Road, and we've came across another Alex V 6.2. We have run into some mountain trail owners on the Gibb River Road. They've completed it in a 6.2, just like us. So I'm gonna to get together a platter, some drinks, and share our stories on our experience. And what a mission it has been on the Gibb River Road. 
It has. 655 kilometers of dirt, corrugations, red dust. Last night on the Gibb River Road, we're going to cook on the open fire tonight. We love cooking the open fire. It's a sense of earthiness when you can light a fire and cook a whole meal on it, which is absolutely beautiful and nutritious to eat. So I'm going to get the hot plate going on the open fire while Heidi is preparing the potatoes inside. Scotch fillets, here we go. Lots of oil. A long time ago. Pepper. These are the best tasting potatoes we've had on the entire trip because they were cooked and roasted in the fire over coals. And what sort of an open fire is it without marshmallows for dessert? What a great way to finish our trip on the Gibb River Road. Two Alex V 6.2s, great company, great food, good music and banter right into the night. We have just finished the Gibb River Road, 655 kilometers, an epic, epic journey. And I tell you what, I feel so invigorated and excited and just life is in me. That was such an exciting trip. It was amazing. The Kimberleys is an incredible location that you must go to. It's so exciting out there. It's absolutely magnificent. It's beautiful. The scenery is epic. The falls, the gorges. I just want to go back and I want to do it again. Oh, me too. That's how I feel. And the Land Cruiser 300 series, unbelievable. We wanted to do it with a stock vehicle. We didn't want to put bars and winches and snorkels and wheels on it. We wanted to show you could do it stock. So all we did was change the tyres and we did have issues with tyres, but the Gib River Road is notorious for tyres. The van performs so well. They are designed for pure off-road. So there's no fatigue in corrugations. We have aluminium cabinetry carcasses, no joinery in the whole van. So no dust either. It was fantastic. Absolutely hide. It's built for the situations. Lots of corrugations, lots of dust, heaps of washouts, air suspension, heaps of power, heaps of lithium. This is what we do guys. We build vans for these conditions. It's done everything that it's meant to do. It has performed beautifully. Thank you for watching this episode. We hope you've really enjoyed it. Please like it if you liked it. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss out when we drop our next episode because it is coming soon.